Hello, my name is Shay Kroskoff. I'm an attorney with the law firm Wadler Purchase Hundle and Curlick, and I'm making this quick video today to discuss some key implications when negotiating a solar and wind lease. Um, if you're a landowner in Texas, you've likely, and you're watching this video, you've likely been approached by a renewables company, as we'll refer to them throughout, uh, with an offer to develop a you know solar or wind project on your property. While these offers may result in substantial monthly or quarterly payments, it's also important to consider the effects it will have on your property. Um, so today, we're going to quickly discuss several key points, those being taxes, restoration, your mineral rights, and the limitations it will have on your property and potentially your adjacent properties. That being said, before we dive off into these uh, key points, it's really important to keep in mind that this lease is simply an option contract. So just because you've signed it doesn't mean that the project is going to happen. It simply means that the solar company or the wind company will have the right to exercise that option to develop a renewables project on your property. So keep that in mind before you, you know, start negotiating these leases. So to get started, we're going to discuss the taxes. As we all know, in Texas, the agricultural exemption is very important and very valuable. Um, that being said, these projects, especially solar, are going to have a big impact on your agricultural exemption. Now, the renewables companies recognize these issues, and they're more often than not willing to try to rectify that issue in some kind of way. Um, and they normally handle that by reimbursing you each year for the value of that lost ag exemption. So it's important to keep in mind that um, you need to negotiate the structure of how you're going to be reimbursed, and that's either by them paying the taxes outright, uh, depending on your financial situation, or them reimbursing you later on. So keep that in mind. Um, that being said, don't stop there. Uh, getting an ag exemption is difficult in Texas. You have to have your property under ag production for at least five of the last seven years. So once the property, once the project is, re is, is terminated and the property is restored, there's going to be at least a five-year window where nobody is reimbursing you for your ag exemption. That's why it's important to seek what we call a requalification fee. Now this requalification fee is going to aid you in uh, requalifying for your ag exemption, and it's handled in a number of ways. Uh, a common option is for them to just pay you a flat fee of an estimated requalification fee up front when they start constructing the project and that money is to then be used to help you requalify you know 30 to 50 years later down the road another option is to have them continue paying your uh your, your to continue reimbursing you for that loss of your ag exemption for at least five years after the property is restored that being said it's important to make sure that this uh this requalification fee if that's the option you're going to go down it's important that the requalification fee is secured somehow and we're fixing to discuss the restoration bond that the solar companies must post. So if possible, you should try to get them to, to include that requalification fee within the restoration bond just to make sure it's, it's secured. So moving forward to restoration, uh, a key concern of most landowners is how the property is going to be restored. <coughs> Thankfully, the Texas legislator has recently enacted some new statutes under the Utilities Code that mandate that the solar and renewables, the solar and wind companies um, restore the property close to its original condition by taking several steps. More importantly, how, more importantly, however, the new legislation mandates that the solar and wind company must post a, a security bond. Uh, so it's oftentimes you know, referred to in the lease as the surety bond or the restoration bond. Now, this restoration bond um, is going to be put in place generally 10 to 20 years into the project's life. Um, and it'll be for the value of what an estimated cost of removal is, less the scrap value. Um, that's almost always the structure that these leases, leases uh, go by. So moving forward, I also want to discuss the mineral rights. Depending on where the project is located, the mineral rights could be the mineral rights beneath the property could be very valuable. Um, so it's important to keep in mind the mineral estate when negotiating these leases. It's also important to keep in mind that the, do that the, the mineral estate is the dominant estate, which means in theory, the mineral owner could come in and remove solar panels and actually start drilling the property. Now, of course, that's just in theory, but it is a possibility. 
So that being said, it's very important to take care of this. And it's also important if, you're the, if you own the surface and the minerals underneath. You still want to be able to develop those minerals, of course. So there's several ways of handling this. The most common way is what we call a drill site designation or a mineral reservation. What this is, is a holdout of five to ten acres of land in which the renewables company will not be able to develop on and will strictly be reserved for you to come in and explore and develop the minerals beneath the property. That being said, it's also important to make sure that there is a corridor leading to the mineral holdout or the, the drill site designation to allow electricity to be ran, pipelines to be ran, you know, and just you know, access to the mineral uh, reservation. So it's super important to consider those aspects, but it's, you know, another option is also to consider a mineral waiver. Depending on where the property is located, the minerals beneath the property may not be as valuable. Um, so a lot of times renewables companies will offer a mineral waiver in which you legitimately uh, waive your right to produce the minerals beneath the property in exchange for a hefty upfront payment. So that could be an attractive offer to several, uh, to several landowners. It's also important to keep in mind though <clears throat> that even if you've reserved yourself a drill site designation, these leases will oftentimes have additional limiting provisions such as um, a broad term saying that you agree not to interfere with their production of energy. So in theory, again, um, drilling your well could create a lot of dust and a lot of shadows and could interfere with a solar farm, for example. So it's important to negotiate that uh, provision carefully to make sure that it doesn't apply to your production of your minerals. Moving forward, I also want to quickly address potential limitations that these projects could have on your property as well as any properties you own adjacent to the project. So as mentioned previously, almost all these leases will contain a provision stating that you will not substantially interfere with the renewables company's ability to produce energy. <clears throat> so that alone uh, is going to be a burden, but also these leases itself, these leases will contain provisions saying that you can't develop certain structures as tall buildings or place billboards on your neighboring property or for example on wind leases, you won't be able to develop, uh, you won't be able to construct, you know, tall barns that could potentially block the wind um, and, and so forth. So there are a lot of limitations that they're going to have on your property. Not to mention, um, you know, a solar farm is going to take up pretty much every square foot of your property if you've leased every you know, square foot of your property. Uh, and also not to mention you won't be able to access the property most of the time on your solar farm. Now it's quite a bit different under a wind lease where you're still going to be able to farm and the likes around it, um, but these restrictions can be substantial. It's also important to keep in mind that these limitations could impact your adjacent properties. Um, by way of example, uh, again with the limiting provision of you will not substantially interfere with the renewables company's rights to produce energy. Um, it could be interpreted so as to mean if you're kicking up a lot of dust in your farming operation on the adjacent property that the dust is blocking the sun and interfering with, uh, with the solar company's rights to produce that energy off the sun. So it's super important to carefully negotiate those provisions to, so as to not limit your existing use of the property, uh, of your adjacent properties. At the end of the day, these leases are long and laborious and almost always slant it in favor of the renewables company. Therefore, it's super important to hire an attorney that has experience uh, in negotiating these types of leases. Again, my name is Shay Kroskoff and I'm an attorney with Wadler Purchase Hundle and Curlick and I thank you for watching this video.